Look what I have here. It's Yi 4K Plus. This little piggy can shoot 4K in 60 frames per second in 135 megabits per second. This little piggy shoots 4K in 30 frames per second in 60 megabits per second. And this little piggy shoots 4K in 30 frames per second in 100 megabits per second. Hmm, time to make some bacon. Here it is! It comes in this iPad mini style box. Highlights of the camera is on the side and the specifications like lens and sensor information is on the back side of the box. Inside we're greeted with some papers about the camera, some touchy feely foam, underwater housing that is GoPro mount compatible, a GoPro to regular tripod thread converter mount, 1400 mAh battery that looks like GoPro Hero 5's 1220 mAh battery, USB to USB-C cable and the camera itself. Compared to Hero 5 Black, it is a little wider but shorter and thinner. The only input on Yi is the USB-C port which has a cover that keeps opening up by itself and it is quite annoying. Even if you close it properly, after a while it opens up by itself. Just like my ex's legs whenever she meditated with that Gru guy. Being able to shoot in 60 frames per second 4K gives you the option to slow the footage down. Right now the 60 frames per second footage is playing at 30 frames per second. I've added stabilization, contrast and saturation in my video editing program Final Cut. I think it looks pretty impressive for a $339 action camera. If you like Yi 4K Plus can shoot up to 4000 to 3008 in 30 frames per second as well. I shot 28 minute 4K 60 frames per second video indoor under my studio lights then I walked outside and shot another 5 minutes of 4K 60 frames per second video on a hot surface and even though the camera felt very hot it didn't overheat or shut down. E 4K Plus has electronic image stabilization up to 4K 30 frames per second and it works fine. It uses the 4000 to 3000 footage in combination with the information it gets from its accelerometer and gyroscope and stabilizes the footage pretty well. Well. This is running. But when you decide to run or the camera gets shaken a little more, you reach the electronic image stabilization's limits pretty fast and the need for a gimbal rises. As much as I give GoPro a hard time because it's lacking a lot of features and it has horrible audio and doesn't provide electronic image stabilization in 4K, it's still a really good camera. GoPro is still a great company. So when I go and criticize this, it's like making fun of your siblings. In the end, we like these cameras, they're, they're good. We are like a little dysfunctional family, mostly because of this. This is really good. This, however, is like that new kid in town. It's like those movies when the new kid comes to town and falls in love with the other guy's sister or something. They're always into some sort of sports like skateboarding. Let's let's talk about trashing and this is the new guy and actually it didn't fall in love with GoPro's sister it stole GoPro's girlfriend Yi is working with Google Google ditched GoPro for Yi scandalous if Google is working with these guys instead of these guys maybe there's something to this camera well there's only one way to find out Let's go outside and compare them. Let's begin with image quality. Let's zoom in to 200%. Now let's see 400%. I think I see the most detail in Sony FDR X3000. According to the Luma waveform, Yi 4K Plus's highlights clip at 100 IRE and the black seem to be around 7.5, which may mean the footage you get right out of 4K Plus is NTSC US broadcast ready. Interesting. Both Yi and Hero 5 clips on highlights, which is not something you like for editing. Meanwhile, Sony FDR-X3000 seems to be doing better. When I switch Yi 4K to flat, GoPro to ProTune and FDR to natural, 4K Plus and Hero 5 Black still clips at highlights. Meanwhile, FDR-X3000 seems to be giving me the best results in highlights and shadows. When it comes to stabilization, once again, Sony FDR-X3000 takes the lead. 
Since GoPro Hero 5 Black doesn't have electronic image stabilization in 4K, using it without a gimbal is nearly impossible. E4K is doing a better job than GoPro, but still nothing compared to the Sony. All of these cameras can shoot 720p at 240 frames per second and 1080p at 120 frames per second slow motion videos. At 720p, GoPro crops the image, which is not my favorite. In this low light slow mo test, as you can see, Sony FDR X3000 performed the worst. When it comes to time-lapse, both the E4K Plus and GoPro Hero 5 Black can shoot time-lapse videos. But Sony FDR-X3000 only takes time-lapse photos, which means you need to turn them into a video yourself. Stupid Sony. Now let's take a look at the screen brightness. Cannot see anything on screen I can see GoPro and Sony clearly but I cannot see ye very clearly especially if I was to wear sunglasses things go south a little bit so I can see Sony's screen when I'm wearing the sunglasses I can see GoPro screen but I cannot see ye screen at all I also realized you see less on this screen because of the writings. You have to tap to make the writings go away. But with this one, you can keep the writings. And also with this one as well. When it comes to audio quality, with Sony, you get what you expect. Normal audio quality. So we celebrate Nikola Tesla's life and his inventions with the Tesla coil. With E4K+, Plus, you get what you paid for. Lower quality, peaking audio. So we celebrate Nikola Tesla's life and his inventions with the Tesla coil. And with GoPro Hero 5 Black, you get what you deserve. So we celebrate Nikola Tesla's life and his inventions with the Tesla coil. Joking aside, GoPro's audio is so bad that it is sort of entertaining. Listen so to they this. Are in Pro Tune and Flat mode, and FDR is in Natural mode. I'm not even touching the cameras, they're on a mount. Let's talk about battery life. The first one to die is Yi. I did more or less the same thing with all three cameras except with Yi. Towards the end, I shot a couple of 4K videos in 60 frames per second, but nothing too much, nothing for too long. So that's the first one to die, turned off by itself and GoPro and Sony FDR X3000 still has a little bit of battery left, like one bar. The thing that bothered me most about the 4K Plus is as soon as you put on your polarized sunglasses, you cannot see the screen. It makes a huge difference for an action camera that you wish <laughs> you can see stuff because you're probably wearing polarized glass to avoid glare in action situations. Another weird thing is when you shoot a video and go into to preview it, it appears as the first. So to go to the next one, you have to hit the right arrow, not the left arrow. It's a little confusing. E4K Plus also has three sharpen settings. It's a good feature if you don't want to sharpen things during editing. This door here is falling out. I hope this is just my camera. I got this from Amazon, by the way. This is not a sample. This is right from Amazon. Now let's take a look at the app. I turned Wi-Fi on, connected to Yi's Wi-Fi, and then their app is called Yi Action. On the first tab, we can connect to camera. Let's look at the other tabs before connecting to the camera. The second tab is your pictures, videos imported from the Yi camera. And then we have filters. We have beautify where you can add stickers and text because nothing beautifies your photo more than a sticker. And then we have tools. Discard editing, yes, please. 
Oh, and then there's this info here where we can see details about the photo. That's cool. Next, we have this Yi community. Everyone has something similar. And here we can browse through other people's submissions. And then the last one is our profile. I don't have a profile with Yi yet, but you can create one. Now, let's go and enter the camera. Here I can adjust the rotation of the screen. What's this exclamation mark? It's asking you to change the password. I can change the lens. Oh, not in 4K 60 frames per second. Let's switch to 4K 30 frames per second. And now I can adjust the lens distortion. And then this is grid. And then we have adjustments here when you click on the tap on the gear. So it's pretty much like all other smartphone apps and it's not lacking anything so it's pretty good. I think E4K Plus is definitely a great alternative to GoPro Hero 5 Black. Is it the best action camera on the market today? I don't think so. I still think Sony FDI-X3000 is the best action camera with its unbeatable optic image stabilization, image quality and 3.5mm microphone in. So E4K Plus, is it a GoPro killer? Well, as much as I love 4K 60 frames per second footage, it is hard to say. I don't think you can kill GoPro with a camera that can keep its USB-C port closed. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. I must have a subscribe button somewhere here on the screen. Hit that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it and join the world domination. And please let me know what you think about Yi 4K Plus in the comment section. I don't have a pillow, but... Oh, what is, what is that? GoPro, are you crying? Don't cry. I know GoPro Hero 6 is going to be fantastic. I mean, I, I don't know. How would I know that? Until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoshchakalas!